Cleveland swooped in and it was like, all right, here we go. Did you think of me at all? I did. I was like, yeah, Chris is probably pretty pumped. <laughs> Hey, everybody, and welcome to yet another episode of the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media. And oh, look who I found <laughs> after several months, none other than Lucas Giolito. Where the hell have you been? I've been all over the place, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, oh, all, I've been everywhere. My goodness. We have a lot to cover with you. A lot oh, yeah. to cover. Um, but before that, truth be told, we are taping this on Halloween. Is that one of your favorites or not? When I was a kid, oh yeah. Yeah, the neighborhood I grew up in was like crazy for trick-or-treating. And what'd you go as? A baseball player? Uh, I don't think I ever did baseball player. I'm trying to remember my top costumes. One of my like adult costumes, I was a Smurf. It was like ironic. <laughs> Biggest Smurf ever. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, I I don't know if I ever put too much effort into costumes. It was always like going to the store, you know, a few days before and seeing what was left. I had you guys pegged as a creative family with so much art in your in your background. My memory might just be off. I'm sure like my mom will watch this episode and be like, no, do you remember when we did this? And it was like a whole thing. I, I just don't remember. Yeah. Last year I was Luigi. Oh my like, God. Like from the Great. Mario brothers. Great one. I like that. Yeah. Okay. Solid. Um, yeah. We live in a neighborhood in Los Angeles. It will literally be a tidal wave of children. And um, we made the mistake. We moved here. We had this house built at, uh, right before the pandemic. And so it wasn't finished by Halloween of 2019. But we were like, we want to see what the neighborhood's all about. There were a gazillion kids. Mm -hmm. And word got out that we were handing out full-size candy bars. Uh-oh. A huge mistake. Because then we were setting a precedent. Yeah. Bad idea. Yeah, my next door, my next door neighbor did that. Yeah. That, that's always a big deal. But like... There was there's a couple streets in my neighborhood that like did it big time because there were like Hollywood producers and stuff that lived on those streets. So they would set up entire like haunted houses and they would have like whole like scenes. I remember there was one house that always put they put like a classic car in front of their house with like skeletons in it. And they set up like entire like movie sets damn near. Um and they would have like cotton candy machines and popcorn. It was crazy. I mean, who the hell you live next to? George Lucas? Something like that. Yeah. Damn. All right, baller. Yeah, we we could have between four and five hundred kids tonight. Ridiculous. Yeah. There was no. one Halloween. Is uh, I've told you before. My dad used to work Electronic Arts, yes. the video game developer, right? And so I would rate. That was like the coolest thing ever when I was a kid going to my dad's office and they had like a storage closet in the parking garage that was just filled with copies of games for that era. It was like the PlayStation two Xbox, uh, original Xbox era. And I remember going and just like stealing an entire box full of like that year's Madden um or something like that and i wanted to be really cool and so when it was uh halloween and i was done trick-or-treating i kids were coming up to the house and i was like you got a playstation or an xbox and they'd say oh playstation i'd be like here you go here's madden <laughs> best house ever yeah Are you kidding me and then you know your family probably got sued because some tit kid tried to sink his teeth into madden good job yeah, that wouldn't be a good idea not at all not at all all right so we haven't talked i think my guess is early july maybe mid july and then you got traded mm -hmm. and i didn't want to really bother you and i texted with you i was like i you know it had been two weeks 
and you guys started out on the road. So you had been on the road forever and you were like, I'm just not settled in yet. And then I was getting ready to text you. And then you got traded again. No, I was I picked was like, up off waivers. I wasn't traded. I got traded well, once. Yes, you were on waivers. Correct. You moved teams. And I was like, okay, we'll just catch up at the end of the season here. So let's dial it back all the way to the day you were traded. Okay. All right. The White Sox were not your first organization. You got drafted and debuted with the Nationals. So you'd been through that. But for the first time as like a man. You and got during traded. the and during the middle of the year too is a lot different. Yes, um, it was. It didn't come as a shock. We had talked about it when we sat down at Dodger Stadium. So the day you got traded, what were the emotions? Um, yeah, I mean, I was like mentally and emotionally preparing for it for sure for a little while because it was kind of coming. Um, and then you know it, it led up to. That like final week, it was like it could happen today, and it didn't happen that day. It could happen today, it didn't happen that day. And at that point, I was like, "Well, if it doesn't happen yet, it's probably going to happen like on the deadline day," which I think was like two, three days away. But then, uh, we had this game. It was actually pretty funny because <laughs> I wasn't pitching; I was in the dugout, and there was this fan. Uh, that was kind of heckling me the entire game, nonstop. I don't know if he was a White Sox fan or if he was just trolling. Like, I don't know what this guy was doing, but he would not shut up. He wouldn't leave me alone the entire game. He kept yelling at me like, pack your bags, Giolito. Like, you're going, you're going here, you're going there. You know, it's been a pleasure, but we'll see you later. Pack your bags. Like, he wouldn't stop. And I was sitting there and I was starting to get angry actually, because I was like, man, this could potentially be my last game in a White Sox uniform. It's a very emotional situation. I got this, I got this motherfucker behind me. That's just like ruining it. (laughs) It was so annoying. And so usually you try to keep your eyes forward and you don't want to engage, but like he wouldn't stop. And it was like the eighth inning. Eighth inning, still going, still saying the same thing, the same thing over and over and over again. And I turned around, I gauged with him. I didn't, I had some not so nice things to say to him. And I said, All right, like that's enough. Like I've heard you a million times. You know, great job. You got my attention, but like that's enough. But he kept going. So I threw him out. You, th- you got security? Yeah, I got security to get rid of him. I I just like was like, all right, I want to have like at least one inning of peace. You know what I mean? And then oh. after that, game over, go in the clubhouse, and I was just like doing my normal post game, whatever. I don't remember if we won or lost, but you know, I go take a shower, come back, and I see Ronaldo like. Everyone's kind of surrounding him and he's like dapping guys up, giving hugs. I'm like, oh shit, Ronaldo got traded. So I go up to him, I'm like, dude, where are you going? What's going on? He's like, oh, I'm going to the Angels, bro. I'm like, dang, that's crazy. Like, this can be the first time that we're not together, like as teammates in our entire career since we were like 18 years old. And, but I'm like, hey, I'm happy for you. That's great. It's going to be fun over there. Great opportunity. Um, you know, go do your thing. I go to my locker. I turn around. There's our assistant GM. I'm like, hey, Jeremy. <laughs> and he's just like looking at me. I'm like, oh, okay. All right. It's time. And he's like, yep. And so we go in the office and I realize, you know, have a nice conversation with Rick and Jeremy and Pedro and everybody else in there. And you know, find out that I'm in the same trade as Ronaldo. So we stayed together. Uh, And yeah, I mean, it was definitely like a bit emotional just because, you know, I have such a, uh, I don't know the word, the best word to describe it is like the, the feeling of, you know, leaving the team that I'm, I've really been a part of for so many years. And, you know, that organization had done so much for me and 
I'd like to think that I did a little bit to to help them as well. And so, uh, you know, it was, it was definitely sad. But at the same time, it was like, all right, you got to go because you have like 24 hours. Uh, luckily for me as a starting pitcher, I get a little bit more time like Ronaldo relief pitchers like they got to go like they're in the lineup. They, they got to be ready to pitch the next day. So I had like a full day the next day to get everything together and then get on a plane, go to Toronto. And then I made my angels debut. Did you cry? Um, no, I did not. Do you think that's because you knew it was coming? Yeah, and I had all I had already had an emotional thing that we don't yeah. need that we don't necessarily need to like get super into. That happened like a few weeks before. Were you? I know you don't want to get into it, but were you sad or were you angry? No, not angry. Sad for sure. Um. You know, because yeah, I was with the White Sox. Uh, I was one of the first like pieces of the rebuild, along mm-hmm. with a bunch of a uh, bunch of other really great, talented players. And it was like, all right, like this is the game plan. This is what we're going to do. It's going to take some years, and then we're going to be a contender. We're going to win, blah blah blah. And it just never really came together. So it was kind of like this sad feeling of, damn, man, like. I wish that I had done more. I wish that I had helped more. I wish that I had pitched better. You know, you think back, it's like, man, you know, if I had done this better, um, if we collectively had done this better as players, then maybe this wouldn't have happened. You know, we'd be in a position where we're all staying and we're making a, a postseason push. But, you know, that's the nature of the game. Like, you're going to have your failures and, uh, we experienced a lot of those uh, as a team and as individuals that season and the season before. So it got to that point where it was inevitable that a lot of guys can be dealt at the trade deadline and, you know, me being one of them. You know, I've often told Ploof on our other podcast we do, Baseball Today, I said, I can't wait for the White Sox 30 for 30 in like 20 years because I think it's one of the great mysteries in baseball over the last several seasons is, why this team wasn't better now that you had a little time to kind of get away from baseball, not have to move your bags every three weeks. Do you have a reason as to, as to why this didn't work? I don't really think there's, I don't think it's like some super intricate thing. It's just, we didn't play well enough. I always thought that it was a, a mixture of not bad guys, but it was a bad mix. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm not. Yeah, I mean, you could say that. You could say that. Like, you know, the it never. Like, there are times where it was like really just good vibes all around. It, that's the thing is like I think about the team and and all the players. And like you said, it was always a good group of guys and we always got along. It's not like it's not like guys like hated each other and we were like having all these issues. Like everyone got along. We had a good time together. It was just just didn't put a good product out on the field consistently enough. Like you have to go out and you have to win and you have to play well. You know, I think to my time as a White Sox and I had some some good times and some successes, but it wasn't consistent enough. Uh, you know, when I think back on it, you know, that's still what I'm searching for is being a lot more of a consistent starting pitcher. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, you ask a number of the guys on the team, they'd probably have the same kind of answer where it's like we just didn't didn't play well enough. You know, you have to play really, really good defense. You have to pitch well consistently all the time, and you have to find ways to score runs. And it seemed like 
a lot of time it's like we weren't doing all three of those things at the same time it's like sometimes the offense would get really hot but the pitching would falter or if the pit pitching was really good then the defense you know it, it was just kind of never you know you you look at the teams that are consistently in the postseason it's like they're firing from all three cylinders all the time and if like one area is lacking then the other areas are like picking them up mm -hmm. and then until until they get back so yeah, I don't know. Just never. I don't think there's any like crazy like, you know. You say you wait for the thirty for thirty. It's like didn't play good enough. <laughs> That's pretty much it. All right, so let's cancel it. Sounds pretty boring to me. Um, <laughs> yeah. Hey, more of the Chris Rose rotation coming your way, but first I want to talk about one of my favorite things: food, meal prep. I get it. We're smack dab in the middle of fall. If you got kids or whatever your schedule is. It can get nuts out there. And you know what you don't have time for? Heading to the grocery store and buying produce and food and everything else and then cutting it up and preparing a meal at the end of the day after you've worked all those hours. So let me help you out. HelloFresh is the way to go. They've got more than 40 recipes to choose from, so there's always something delicious to discover thanks to HelloFresh. So many in-season ingredients. You're going to taste the freshness of fall Right there, from the chef's handcrafted recipes, all the produce that travels right from the farm to your door for peak ripeness and taste. We know that the fall can get jam-packed for you. So what do we want to do? Make meals that are easy. We're talking about their 15-minute meals. That takes less time than you picking up your phone or trying to spin it through an app and having it delivered. And then you got to, you know, throw a tip on there and take care of a service fee, all sorts of stuff. Before you know it, you're out a ton of dough and you've been waiting around on somebody because they're running late. Hello, Fresh. All you got to do is open up the refrigerator door and you take care of business. And did you know that it's 25% less expensive than takeout and shopping as well? I'll tell you, I love it. Sometimes I have it for dinner. Sometimes I have it for lunch right in the middle of the day and it fills me up. And for those of you that know me, I got a problem right in the middle of the day with my food. This fills me up, and it takes me all the way to dinner. So head on over to HelloFresh.com slash 50 rotation. You use that code 50 rotation for what? 50% off plus free shipping. That's a big deal because it's a nice, meaty box. That is HelloFresh.com slash 50 rotation. Start using America's number one meal kit today. Yummy. Let's move on to that um, extended stint in Anaheim. So you get to Toronto. At the time, there's no Mike Trout. He's not close to coming back. They kind of had been... Eh, anyway, there was rumors, is Shohei going to get traded? Is he not? He doesn't end up getting traded. You come into that clubhouse. What's it like the first time you meet Shohei? Shohei's great, yeah. Uh, oh, you're showing the clip from... Yeah, that turned into like a meme or something. Like yeah. Shohei was great. He's he's really funny. Um, you know, his translator Ipe, they're attached at the hip, so um you can always communicate with him. You know, he understands some English, he understands some Spanish, but you know, you, you get into types of conversations where you might be a, a little bit more lost, boom, you got Ipe right there. So it's like you communicate about, about whatever all the time. He's like low key, really funny. Um he he would he would mess around with me, talk some shit to me sometimes. It was it was good. Um but like the thing that impressed me most about him was like for what he what he does, like, you know, I saw it on the other side. I faced him a lot. You know, he has like a lot of at bats against me. So I faced him a lot. I know how good he is. I've watched him pitch a lot. But you you know, until you're you're like with a dude all the time and you're seeing like, all right, how do they do this? Like, what's their work ethic like? What do they do to prepare? You know, for me, it's like, is he just like super gifted and he shows up and that's no, no. He the amount of work he puts in is crazy. And a lot of it's like on the iPad, like a lot of preparation. Like he'll be in the weight room warming up to pitch. And he'll have like the iPad or he'll have like the TVs in the weight room 
showing the other team's pitcher. So he's like preparing to hit at the same time while he's doing his exercises to warm up for pitching. Like he'd, uh, he's always had an iPad in his hand pregame, whether it was to look at the hitters he was going to face or to look at the pitcher he's going to face and like preparing mentally for, oh, okay, I'm probably going to see this kind of pitch mix or this is a pitch mix I need to go out with to, to get these guys out. Um, and then I found out he sleeps a lot, like a lot, a lot, um, like 10 to 12, 13 hours a night, a lot, like crazy. Um, which I guess kind of makes sense considering like the strain he puts on his body doing what he does. I couldn't imagine doing that. Like, going out and hitting every day and then also pitching every six days, seven days, whatever it was. So yeah, very impressive. Very impressive. What, uh, what sort of shit did he talk to? Um, I'm trying to remember, like he made fun of the way I sat, he made fun of the way I was sitting in my locker on my phone. Like I remember I was like sitting on, I was like sitting in my locker and then he like looked at me and he and he <laughs> went into this like little crouch position with his legs out and i was like what are you doing he's like that's you i'm like oh man all right uh did he, did he ever talk to you about the didn't he he's taking you deep right uh like i think at least three times got it did he talk shit about any of that stuff no not really Nah. that'd be fun i don't want to get i don't want to give you the wrong impression like he is very polite extremely yeah, but that's fun though that's if anything he, he gets more points in my world and i love well, yeah him. no he gets more points yeah he gets more points in my world i i didn't you know i didn't know anything about his personality until i was teammates with him right and i i love his personality he's great um but again, like the the biggest thing that stuck out to me is like the work ethic. I mean, what he was doing to prepare, um, not just, you know, we all do stuff. Everyone's different. Like physically, some guys weight lift, other guys don't weight lift. Like some guys like to run, other guys don't like to run. And it's kind of like very individual, but like mental preparation, you know, the stuff you're doing on the iPad and scouting reports and all like all that. I was very impressed with how in depth he got and on a daily basis watching him up close do you think he's a more talented hitter or pitcher i don't know um like what's more natural for him do you think what looks more natural hitting he's gotten he he liked found another gear with hitting i think this especially this year because I remember facing him earlier in his career, which was early in my career too, and there were like clear holes. There was like a clear, oh, throw him fastballs here, he's not going to hit it. Throw him change-ups here, he's not going to hit it. It's a lot of swing and miss. Like he still has a good amount of swing and miss, but he now he's covering pitches that he didn't used to cover. And he'll and like with power too. That's the thing. It's like you throw a high fastball out of the zone and it's like 107 exit velo home run. Um so you know, I throw him I used to throw him change ups, like elevated change ups, like way out, and he would chase them all the time, swing and misses. And now it's like I I elevate him a change up and it's out of the zone. He'll probably take it. And if he doesn't take it, like he stays on it and then like hooks it down the line for a triple. So it's like the the hitting I see just keeps keeps getting elevated. Um, you know, the pitching side, I mean, he's really, really elite stuff. I think that the only thing holding him back is the arm injuries. I wonder how that's gonna play out, man. I I was so sad. I think the whole sport was crushed. People outside of the sport were crushed, you know, who aren't mm -hmm. diehard baseball fans, but knew about him. You had uh, athletes in other sports tweeting about the injury and how much it sucked. Well, his level just... of celebrity is like something I've never seen before. How's That's that? another thing. Like in Toronto, 
getting off the bus. No matter, you play on a big league team, there's going to be like, depending, right? The Yankees probably have a pretty big crowd at the hotel waiting for them to get off the bus. White Sox, eh, not so much. There'd be like a couple people, whatever. Mostly people just wanting autographs. The Angels, everywhere we went, there was a big crowd. But it wasn't for the Angels. It was for Shohei Otani. And I remember getting off the bus in Toronto. And he sat all the way in the back. And I get off the bus for him. It was like after a day game or something. And I'm like walking into the hotel. I'm like, you know what? I got to turn around and like see what happens when he gets off the bus. Because it was like a huge crowd of people. He gets off the bus. And I remember there was like a probably young teenage age girl that just burst out into tears as soon as he walked off the bus. Like started bawling, crying because she saw him. It's not like he even went over there to to sign or take pictures or anything, just looking at him, she started crying. Like, and everyone's freaking out and going insane. Like in the stadium in Anaheim, um, you know, you get later into the game when people start to leave, if, especially if it's like a blowout or something, then the whole Shohei Otani fan base is like, they come in right behind the dugout, just hoping that he'll like poke his head out. And when they do, it's like, you turn around, it's just flashes like so many cameras going off and people chanting. And um, yeah, it was it was really, I've never seen anything like it. It was something else. Yeah. I talked to Vinny Pasquantino, who played for Team Italy in the World Baseball Classic. They had to play Team Japan in the quarterfinals over there. He said it is, he said he's never seen anything like it. He said it's yeah. crazy. He said it, he called it like a combination of the Beatles and like the old Chicago Bulls combined into one. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I don't even know how to describe. I've never seen anything like that before. It was crazy. And he handles it so well. I was like thinking, I, I'm thinking to myself, I wouldn't be able to handle that level of celebrity, man. Like I, I don't want that at all. It's like he doesn't, he doesn't care. Incredible. He's cool with it. Yeah. Really is. Wonder how what the hell he does. He can't go outside. He can't go somewhere in public. I don't think he does too often during during the season. Yeah. I can't but go again, he's very can't. baseball oriented. Yeah. I, I get all that. I get all that. All right. So you're out in, in Anaheim, not very long, but it's it's a rough go for you. It's not great mm -hmm. on the field. You've just been traded. People don't realize what it's like. Like we see you one day, you're in a white sock uniform and the next day you're in an angels. And we're like, Oh, okay, cool. How fucked up was your life when that happened? I don't know, man. I, I don't like making excuses. No, I'm not asking you to make excuses. We understand the pitching and we'll get to that. I'm talking about when your life, not, not a lot of us get traded in from our job. Nobody, you know, we're not giving you sympathy, but there is, your life gets turned upside down, Lucas. Yeah. No, I mean, you know, it was cool going and playing uh, in Southern California. Like, I grew up in that area. Um, it was unfortunate because, you know, when I first got there, I think the team was maybe two, three games out of a wild card spot, two and a half, something like that. And then I think my second day there, Taylor ward got hit in the face and his season was over and you know mike was it was hard for mike to come back from the ham eight and you know it was, guys are getting beaten up and just weren't playing well i you know obviously i didn't really do my part i, I put a lot of pressure on myself like oh i gotta show up and be the guy right and i've realized now well if i ever get traded again i'm definitely not going to treat it like that i'm just going to try and have fun um because putting extra pressure on yourself doesn't really help much um but yeah i mean i really i mean i enjoyed my short time with the organization i enjoyed playing uh in anaheim uh it was just kind of like kind of sucked because you know we didn't play well and you know the 
moves that the front office made like you like you said it was like either one way or the other it's like trade Shohei or like go all in they wanted to go all in and so it just didn't work out which is you know it always sucks when that kind of thing happens um but I mean as far as like my life personally yeah I mean it was just like a lot of change I guess and you you have to try and get used to that change real quick and so that's something like when you work in pro sports and you're a, a baseball player, there's a lot of players that play for all sorts of different teams. Uh, my thing was that I was with one team for like the entirety of my major league career. And that was like home, home. And then it was like, boom, like done, like on to the next. And so, you know, you don't really get time to adjust. So it's like really quick. You just have to like quickly try and get used to it. Did you, what'd you do? Did you live in a hotel? No, no. Lived in a house. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. I mean, all the that. like living, living arrangements and stuff were totally great. No, no issues there. Where, yeah. Where'd you live? Uh, Newport. Oh my God. For people that are listening to this and don't know much about Newport, it's about as sweet as you can get in this it's nice area. Yeah. Oh, hell yes, yeah. it is. Hell yes, it is. And then you're not done moving. Did anybody tell you you had been placed on waivers? Oh boy. <laughs> um Yeah, so That was crazy. Um <laughs> I we were in Philadelphia and it was like business as usual, like, you know, it's getting to that point of the season where it's like, damn, you know, we kind of, we, we blew it, missed our opportunity, but you know, the team is still together and you now we're, we're just going to finish out the year, play hard, do our thing. Uh, and then I don't know, what, on Twitter, I think Jeff Passan put out. Like the angels are putting all these guys on waivers and we saw it and I was like, my locker, I think my locker was, yeah, my locker was next to uh fro Ren froze. And I'm like, Oh my God. I didn't even know what like waivers. So I called my agent after, like, I didn't know what it meant. Like, are they, are they releasing us? Like what's happening? I didn't, I didn't know what the process was. I didn't know what it meant. But I like see him like, yo, you see this? And he's like, yo, what the hell? <laughs> and so I, I call my agent. He's like, yeah, yeah. So like this is how it works. You're going to be put on waivers, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, like, damn, I, I was like, I did that bad. I did that bad that they're like, get get rid of you after a month, even you know, with one month left in the season and, you know, the least I can do is maybe I can eat some innings for him. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm like, I did that shitty. They're like, yeah, Giolito, get the fuck out of here. And he was like, no, no, that's not how it works. Like they're basically like dumping salary and it like goes to each team based on, you know, their win loss record. And then they can pick you like, you're going to get picked up by a team that's, you know, trying to make a playoff push. I'm like, oh, okay, I guess that makes sense. And so then we go <laughs> into the manager's office with um Bill, <laughs> and he's like, I don't know what's going on. This is crazy. I loved playing for him, by the way. He was freaking awesome. And then, you know, that was, that was pretty much it. And then uh it was kind of like purgatory for like a day or two. And then that, and then we traveled to San Francisco and then on, on that off day is when I found out I was going to Cleveland. And when that happened, you get claimed by a team that's one of your arch rivals, your, the entirety of your career Were you like, come on, really? Yeah, it was, it was really interesting. Um, it, you know, I was like looking at the list. Uh, I was looking at like the win loss record and looking at the teams. I'm like, okay, so maybe I was looking at teams that were like in the hunt for the playoffs and things like that. And 
there was like a few teams I'm like, ooh, may, okay, maybe it will be the San Francisco Giants or maybe it will be the Cincinnati Reds or maybe it will be uh, the Cubs if I make it that far. Maybe it will be whoever. Um, I just named three NL teams. I don't remember the American League teams I was looking at. But um, yeah, I, Cleveland swooped in. And it was like, all right, here we go. You know, I've already been through, you know, I've been through it. So let's let's keep it moving. Did you think of me at all? I did. I was like, yeah, Chris is probably pretty pumped. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my Twitter feed lit up. Yeah. It's like, can you believe this? Your boy is going to Cleveland. I was like, what is going on? I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. Yeah. It really was I was like, I can't bother him. But I, I will say, um, Cleveland is, it's not my favorite city in the world. I get it. Organization was wonderful, man. What, what a wonderful organization to play for, top to bottom. Player, the players, fantastic great group of guys like they're really close-knit fun group of guys it was fun to like be a part of that for like a month and young like energetic um coaching staff fantastic like support staff fantastic everyone was so personable kind training staff everyone was super super cool front office guys like really supportive really kind because like i was not doing well and, um, you know, I felt I, I was, I was beating myself up a lot. Not going to lie. Cause it's like, man, you know, the angels get me to do, to do something. And like, I'm, I falter the guardians get me to help and I'm faltering. Like it was, it, I was beating myself up a lot, but those guys were like, so supportive, so kind, like, Yeah. Never say a bad thing. Absolutely not. How'd you deal with that? Um, you know, I mean, it is what it is. Like, it sucked. It's like depressing. It sucks, but you know, I you, you think like you could be in you could be in a lot worse spot than you're in in this moment right like i didn't i i haven't i haven't lost confidence as a pitcher like i know what i can do what i'm capable of um it's just like there's there's a couple things to get right first and that's why this offseason i'm kind of taking uh a little bit of a different approach where the offseason leading up to this past season i was like working 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 like as soon as i got back like throwing a lot going crazy um doing a lot of stuff whereas this offseason i'm take trying to take a bit more of like a mental break and get away from like a ball in my hand and then when i'm ready it's like back to basics i'm in chicago so i'm uh having a pretty good time and you know we were talking earlier i'm going on vacation tomorrow it'll be nice good you deserve that i felt i did i felt for you and not only because i like you and i consider you a friend i just i don't like to see people and not succeed when they put so much into it i know how much you do and how much you care and i know your dad did a, a radio interview in chicago i imagine you heard it right i don't i don't like to listen to the media stuff my dad does i don't, I don't know yeah. why he likes doing all that but yeah well but he did make a point that i think is really important is that and listen i've got two sons i'm very proud of them and i will always talk about them in a in a positive light and he said listen is lucas the best pitcher in the american league no is he pretty good yes but you know what he does he shows up every five days and that is really important so that doesn't happen with everybody it just doesn't and so i know how much this stuff means to you and like that one day where it wasn't going right for you as a guardian against the twins 
and they had to leave you out there to eat some innings. I felt terribly for you. You know what? That's uh, I. That's see, I see it as part of the job. Like, and I remember Tito. Man, it was fun playing for him. By the way, legend. It was cool. It was cool that I got a got to just be there for like that little window in time, right? The end of his his career as a manager, legendary career. I had that first start. Obviously, went awful. And after I, I like go down and he and he and he he kind of grabs me and he he basically was he was like apologizing to me. I'm like, what are you talking about? I just I blew I lost the game for us in the first two innings. Like, this is on me. Like, if you need to save the bullpen, I'll go back out there. I don't care. I'll throw 150 pitches. Like, it is what it is. But he it's like that's what I'm saying. Like. I was like really taken aback by that when when he came and, and talked to me because I was like, I was like, w- shouldn't you be mad at me right now? You know what I mean? <laughs> like I I just I just failed immensely, but it's like I don't know that's how I see it. Like you're a starting pitcher, take the ball, go as deep as you can, no matter if it's going good or bad, um, because the I think fans don't realize the toll on uh bullpen arms Mm -hmm. that's that's one thing i think fans really don't get it's like it's something i see all the time when they comment oh why didn't they bring this guy in it's like well maybe his arm really hurts today you know what i mean but they can't you can't put a guy on the aisle just because his arm really hurts that day but it's like um he might need a day and so it's part as a starter starter you know do you got to try and go and I felt bad. I, you know, I, I don't know how many pitches I threw in that outing. It was definitely a lot in a short period of time. Mm. I was like, you need me to go another two? Like, I got you. Even if I give up four more runs, whatever. Like, um, but yeah, I was like, really, I guess that was kind of my introduction to Tito. <laughs> and yeah, he's, he's, he's a gem, man. Yeah. You got to be there when, and Tito did not want a big parade, and he didn't want a lot no. of thank yous, and he didn't actually officially ever really announce it until after the season. But they did have that last game, I think, on a Wednesday mm-hmm. before the season finished, and they were handing out thank you Tito t-shirts, and you guys kind of pushed him out there at the end of the game, and he hated that, but he tipped his cap a couple of times, and Jose blocked the entrance to the dugout the whole bit. Yeah. And... That's what he. That's what he told us. Like it's about the, it's about you guys. It's about the players. We're like, okay, but it can be about you right now. You know what I mean? Like considering everything you've done for so many players, everything you've done for the game of baseball as a whole. Like, and so I'm glad that he at least indulged in that moment for the brief period of time it was. Uh, I got a couple more, and then I want to send you on vacation. Um, number one is. Because you were on three teams this year, you got to play against a bunch of guys that you've competed against, and one of them is Jose Ramirez, whom you faced countless times. Mm. You were not there for the Tim Anderson Jose Ramirez fight. You were in Anaheim, and the cameras caught you explaining to one of your new teammates or somebody in the bullpen. No, I was to Matt Wise. I was a pitching coach. Okay, to Matt Wise. All right. Yeah. So, how did you find the visuals of you doing the punching? Is amazing. Well, I feel I, I, you know, it's like one of those things you got caught in 4K, right? Like I, you know, I, I wish that someone wasn't filming me doing yeah. that, but you know, if you're out there in public, like you have to know better. Um, yeah, basically, like it happened. We were in there, and then we go out to watch starter warm up, and obviously, uh, Wiser's. The pitching coach so he's with the starter when they're warming up and everything so he didn't see anything that happened we all just watched it live like you know 30 seconds ago and then we ran out to make it to the national anthem and all that stuff and watched the starting pitcher warm up and we were talking about it and he was like whoa what happened what happened and then that's when i was like oh this happened and i acted it all out right yeah what 
what was your reaction? Because I mean, those those are all your guys going at it. Yeah, it was crazy, man. I don't. I I was sitting there like, I think I was like with Ronaldo, and we were watching it like, oh my god, <laughs> holy crap. Yeah, we I you know we were not we were like far away removed from the White Sox at that point, so like. I didn't know any of the context of like what was going on the days leading up to it, whatever. And yeah, I guess eventually um, Tim and Jose kind of had enough of each other and duked it out there. Did you call anybody in Chicago afterward? Not really. No, I think I, I texted, I might, might've texted with Dylan Cease a little bit, but uh. got it. And then did you say anything to Jose when you like became teammates with him? Um, no, because he, you could tell that like, he wasn't really proud of it. Like he was, uh, you know, I'm, I, you know, this happened, but like, I don't like it and moving on. You know what I mean? Like he's, he's another guy that's like, I'm very impressed with when it comes to the, love and dedication to baseball and i think that's what he's more focused on and he sees something like that as like a you know i'm I'm not really proud of that that's kind of a distraction so yeah moving on yeah. he was upset because he got suspended and he felt like he hurt the yeah i heard that yes he yeah i think i don't know one of the guys told me that like the thing he was most concerned with was um you know missing games he didn't want to miss games yeah um last thing first time in your career you are now a free agent i know you were hoping to have had a better full season um where are you mentally going into this uh like how do you handle free agency do you do you want have you told your agent only contact me if X comes or this, or are you going to be asking a lot of questions? I'm very close with my agent, Ryan. Um, so I'm, you know, we'll be talking everything like that. Um, you know, some players have kind of just like a very business oriented relationship with their agent I have a very personal relationship with my agent. So I'm sure we'll be talking and, chatting and all sorts of brainstorming whatever um but yeah i mean like you said i'm going into this uh free agency situation in a lot different scenario than if the season had ended at the all-star break (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know there's a whole second half of the season that i really screwed up royally so yeah it's gonna you know we'll see how it goes i mean there you know i Ain't ain't much else to say. It's like see who's interested and go from there. I don't. This is my first time doing it, so I will be heavily re- relying on Ryan and and his expertise, and we'll see what happens. Are you excited or scared or nervous or? Um, I don't. I don't think there's. I don't think there's much to be scared of. I don't either. I'm not I'm not as excited as I wish I was, but it still is exciting because like reaching this point in your career is is pretty cool. Like not a lot of players make it that far. Mm-hmm. So I guess I'm proud of myself for making it this far to where now it's like, all right, cool, I'm a free agent and get to, you know, have this little bit of choice and see what happens. We wish you luck, man. Yeah, um, I appreciate it. And it's good catching up. It really is. I was uh I was excited to see you in a Guardians uniform. I'm thrilled and not surprised that you enjoyed the experience with the people because the mm-hmm. people are wonderful. And I get it. Cleveland's not for everybody. It's not the most hip happen in town for a guy who's in his late twenties. I get it. I understand that. <laughs> but the people are very nice and uh they do care about their sports teams. So I hope you at least met some nice people there. Oh yeah, absolutely. I had a great time. Good. Good. Have a good vacation. I'm not going to bother you with where you're going. But if you want to text me, that's cool. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to go lay out on a beach for a while. It's going to be very good. nice. Finally, what's your favorite Halloween candy? You have one to pick from. Uh, 
Uh, Reese's. Full Reese's. Okay. Solid. I'm a Twix guy. Yeah? Yeah. I like, yeah, the chocolate candy bars are all good. They're all good. Yeah. But I like the chocolate peanut butter. The one I never get is Almond Joy. I don't understand who eats those. I I, I don't know, remember the last time I had that. I think it's like fine, but it's like when you have other choices, you know what I mean? You, you go with the better choices. That's a giveaway. I'm sorry. I get a bag full of candy. I get an Almond Joy. Here, you want some candy? Want some of my extra candy? That's the first one to go. See ya. Beat it. That is it. Uh, special shout out to our fill-in producer on today's show, one and only Dan Rourke and Robbie Chiracco, who's going to be putting this bad boy together. Lucas Giolito will catch up at some point in the offseason. Enjoy your vacation and enjoy the start of free agency. Can't wait till you find whatever home is next for you. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. You got it. I am Chris Rose. We'll see you next time here on the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media.